Hello, hello. So for this video, I am doing my November wrap up. This month, I read a total of five books. I could claim it was more like 4.5 because one of these books is a novella, but for the sake of my happiness, I am going to say five books and I am counting every novella as a full book. Something that made me quite happy this month is for the most part, all these books I enjoyed very much. One of these books includes an author that I own a few books from. It was my first read and that first read impressed me. So I'm excited to read more of their library of books. And then along with that is just that most of the books I just quite enjoyed. So I'm going to stress that point very much so. So this was a happy month for me for the most part. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the first book, Brother by Ania Alborn. She is an author that I own several books of already. This was my first read from this author and I quite enjoyed it. I gave this book a four out of five rating. I didn't have high expectations for this book just because premise wise, if you've watched any of my other videos, you more than likely will hear me say time and time and again, I prefer supernatural books. I prefer hauntings, creature features, things out of the norm. Also sci-fi horror is big on my list. This does not fall under my preferred categories. Having said that, I enjoyed it from beginning to end. And as I've already stated, it has piqued my interest to just read some of her other books. I'm probably gonna read The Shuddering after this, or I don't know, I have so, I think I have like three or four of hers to be honest. So as far as the summary for this book, we have a main character, his name is Michael. He is adopted, let's say, by a family that is very much unorthodox. They're not your typical family and they live a very different lifestyle. Michael, over time, as you read this book, you'll realize that he grapples with the lifestyle of his family and his role as a part of this family and just, just struggles with it and reaches a point where he just simply doesn't know if this is his life path. That's my simple way of describing this book. Reading this book brought me back to the ID network. There was a time where I was obsessed with the ID network and all those shows they have on. If you're familiar with it, you know, like, um, what's it called? It's, it's like the killer beside me, um, dark side American monster, something about the dark side of the web and so on and so forth. It just felt like I was reading one of those episodes in this book. This book did feel like it required some suspension of disbelief. To an extent, it did feel like as I went back to what I recall watching from the ID network, I did find myself saying, you know, this is probably not too far off from what could really happen in real life. So with that said, and with that in mind, it almost made it a more challenging read. I found myself frustrated because of my own personality, the way I would think the main character, Michael, I just found myself like, why, why don't you just do this? Why don't you just do that? What's taking you so long? That's what I was thinking throughout the book. I, I quite like the atmosphere and the buildup of tension. One of my favorite things about this book was actually the ending, which I can't say often. I rarely say that I like the ending of a book or a movie for that matter. Usually that's where things just lose the plot. It just falls apart at the ending. It must be the hardest thing to just wrap up, I guess. I would say the ending was darkly comical, perhaps a bit bittersweet. You know, as far as my reaction, I'd be like, oh, come on, really? <laughs> but again, I thought it was satisfying for an ending and one of my favorite parts about this book. Now, what didn't I like? I did not like, as I've alluded to earlier, Michael as a character. Not that he was necessarily written terribly, but I just found that he didn't have a backbone. And I know that realistically that can happen, but what I find sometimes in reading books, I think of myself and I'm just like, how can this person do this? How can this person be so stupid? Sometimes a person is really being stupid beyond belief and it just pulls me out of the story. That wasn't necessarily the case here. However, I just did find that character frustrating and I wanted them to get to a certain point a bit faster, I guess. 
There was also a romantic element in this book and I will say that did play a significant factor. I don't want to say much more. I have to be intentionally vague to try to be spoiler free. I was not a fan of the romantic element nor the twist. On one hand, I think that that was probably necessary for the book itself. As I said, I did like the ending. I'm not sure it fully worked or it just felt like it was put in there for the sake of having that extra twist. I could have done without it. I'm not sure if the book would have worked the same without it. Take from that what you will. The last thing I would say I didn't like very much, which I've just touched on, was that some aspects of the twist were over the top. I do prefer ambiguity. I do prefer just subtleness in some of my reads, especially in the horror side. This was more thriller or domestic domestic violence thriller type book. Again, it wasn't enough to deter me as I still gave it a four, but if I had to pick something I wasn't a huge fan of, it would be the over the top twist. Some trigger warnings that are in this book, I would just check if you're worried about that. I would look into that for every book that you intend to read, to be fair. This does have like sexual assault, rape, childhood trauma, and some gore as well. So if you're sensitive to any of that, again, I will look up every book that you intend to read just to make sure that none of the potential triggers would bother you. So that's it for Brother, and I'm gonna move on to the next book. The next book I have here is Raven and Fall. Now, this was probably one of the most recent books that was closest to a five star. I just couldn't fully give it a five for some reason. Again, I'm a little bit stingy. I gave this book a 4.5 out of five stars. And the reason is, which I'll touch on that further soon, had to do with just a few things that I disliked about this book, but 4.5 ain't bad, I say so myself, and given that most of the books I've rated so far are usually threes and fours, that says a lot of good for this book anyway, at least in my mind. I'm gonna go into the summary of this book just a bit. We basically have a magical inn, and this book follows the perspective primarily of two kids. One is Anna, and one is Colin. Now, if I remember fully, because it's been a while since I've read it, and usually when I read a book, unfortunately, even the good ones, I very rarely remember it a week later, at least details. I very rarely remember details about the book. I remember emotions and uh, some things about the characters and why I liked it, but ask me details and I'll be like, maybe you should Google <laughs> instead. So we have a magical inn, we have those two kids, we have an ancient creature who is trying to destroy the world on Halloween night, and in particular, this magical place. We learn that Anna, at least initially, has these powers that are less desirable, although that's how it's presented from Anna's perspective. It's called psychometry or, or something along those lines, basically where she can touch a person and she sees death. It's like considered the less useful skill as far as the family, the people within Ravenfall. And so her contribution, a lot of it, ends up happening through chores. She gets assigned a lot of chores. Anyway, very early on in the book, she encounters a character who she touches and that character gives her a very interesting image where, I believe if I'm not mistaken, again, memory a little hazy, she actually sees Colin or she witnesses the scene that happened with Colin. Colin basically is at Ravenfall due to recommendation from his, I think his brother or his family. They, they had told him if anything bad happens, just go to Ravenfall. So that's where he ends up and he meets Anna. Throughout the book, you're going back and forth between Anna and Colin. When Colin shows up, he's basically searching for the creature that killed his parents. He doesn't know what's happened with his brother yet. He's actually asking about him, why he's at Ravenfall, if anyone's seen him, you know, what's going on. But unfortunately, his brother is not there at Ravenfall to meet him. So when Anna encounters Colin, she recognizes him as someone she saw in that vision. Anna and Colin end up joining forces, and I think they're just a fun duo, at least in my mind, they were a fun duo. So they end up joining forces and throughout the story, you uncover more truth about Colin, his family, his past. My initial expectations for this book was to have a lighthearted read that would essentially pull me into this magical world. It achieves that for sure. And I would say it definitely pulled me into the world. I actually did order the sequel, Hollowthorn, which will be at my door any minute. Very excited to read that follow-up book. One of my favorite things about the book was the world itself and the world building. 
It's a very detailed environment. Again, it felt magical. I like the description. I love the writing style. I had the fun time I was expecting and very much wanting from this book. It also had delightful characters. I don't think there was a character I didn't like. I would have to say my favorites were definitely the cat and the house. Those two were definitely my favorite characters. And if you, when you read this yourselves, you will know more about what I mean. The cat also brought me back a little bit to the black cat from Sabrina, the Teenage Witch. I wasn't actually a fan of the TV show. It just made me think of Salem. I think that was the cat's name. And I quite remember liking that character too. I can't stress it enough, this book was definitely a fun and entertaining ride. Something that was surprising and that I also liked was that it was a darker theme. I remember having to check back a few times and just make sure that this was a middle grade. It is, it is a middle grade book. It has a, as I said, a darker adultish theme and they touch on those. When I was younger, I was someone, and I'm talking four or five years old, I was watching horror movies, Evil Dead, American Werewolf. I was watching wrestling, I was playing video games. I turned out fine. It is written for that younger audience, I would say anyway. I also like learning about Ravenfall and that world through Colin's eyes because Colin as a character, as you read this yourselves if you haven't already, he's not familiar with magic and that world so it's almost like you're reading through his eyes and learning about things alongside him which again added this layer of experience of a fun experience with this book. Now, two things I'll highlight that I didn't really care for. The ending felt anticlimactic. For all the buildup to this ancient creature and what was happening, he felt like it could have used a bit more in the ending and it could have felt more, whether it was scary or it could have just felt more intense. I didn't actually get that towards the end. I absolutely felt like that was missing. Yeah, a bit of a disappointing ending, so that's why I really gave it a 4.5 out of 5. I also wish Anna would have progressed as a character a bit faster. If I remember correctly, she was more on the negative side about herself and her powers consistently throughout the book for a prolonged time. Personally, I would have preferred the character growth to just happen more quickly. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and just move on to the next book. So, so far again, really good reads and the next book is no exception. We have here TJ Payne Intercepts. Now, funny thing, I don't know if I've said this before when I shared this book in a haul, this has to be one of the most uninspiring covers. For that reason, I expected very little from this book. It just looked like a stock image to me anyway and just like simple type. Simple is sometimes good. In all fairness, simple is sometimes necessary. This just felt a little cheap as far as design. Having said that, I gave this book a 4 out of 5. So let's get into just a quick summary about what the hell this thing is about. So the premise of this book is nothing new. We've heard the story before. We have a secret experiments being done on humans and the government is evolved. When are they never? It's always the case. We have your underground facility. I believe though part of the description some of the facility is above ground but the bulk of it is underground. We're going through the eyes of the main character Joe who is a supervisor at this facility. The experiments involve extreme sensory deprivation and what it allows them to do actually i don't even know if i should share that because i feel like that's tmi <laughs> i don't know if that's spoilery i'm still figuring out what is and isn't spoilery but essentially you know what happens next in these type of stories given that the premise was just again what we've heard of before i was surprised at just how much fun i had with this book it's exactly what i want from sci-fi horror it wasn't that much sci-fi, you know, like not like the hardcore scientific descriptions within this book, but that element was definitely there. I had originally expected this to be a poorly told sci-fi horror with that premise, largely in part because of the design I talked about earlier. As I've already said though, it surprised me. The sci-fi horror was not complex, but it was just satisfying enough to quell my desire for sci-fi horror. It was that nice balance where I said you weren't just like, what the hell did they just say? Because you know sci-fi can be pretty intense sometimes with some of the descriptions, the science and technology behind what's going on. This didn't have that. Very, very easy to follow. And while I quite like 
those more challenging books. Uh, this didn't have any of that, so again, it was an easy read. I thought the main character, Joe, had dimension. I don't know, I think I remember reading some reviews that definitely don't agree with me on that front, but listen, this is my opinion. I thought he had a good amount of dimension. I actually found it difficult to decide who to really root for, because if you think about it, I mean, you got scientific experiments on these people. Should you really be rooting for the person who is head of the facility, or at least this facility, in a supervisor role? I don't know. <laughs> for some reason, I felt it. Ch I felt it was challenging, which tells me that I think the book did something right. I mean, if I really think about it, you could say the events of the story as it went on. You could say the main character deserved them and had them coming. Again, I'm a little iffy on that front. This is another book too that I would say had a satisfying ending. Another rarity. I did not expect that at all from this book. I thought it'd have a cheesy ending. I don't think it was cheesy at all. For me, the pacing worked really well. I thought that was well done. And because the ending was satisfying, it just felt like a well put together, thought out book. Uh, I didn't feel like any moments were necessarily too slow, although I do have my gripes, which I will get into in a moment. So as far as gripes, one of my main gripes was a character named Aguirre, Aguirre, I don't know how to pronounce that character's name, but this person was basically coming in to check in with the facility. He was like your typical cartoon villain as far as description and the responses. It was a little too like cheesy on that front for me. I would have preferred more depth with that character in particular. Mm, that's just my thoughts. And the other thing I wasn't too crazy about, which we know already, it was typical government nonsense as the root of this. <sighs> it is what it is. It didn't deter from me too much because again, I rated this a four out of five. I also don't know how I fully feel about his daughter and the situations she went through. I... In some ways, I feel like I wanted more from that, especially more with his wife and what happened there. But at the same time, again, I don't know... I don't know if I disliked the approach or not. Maybe it was just enough. Part of me wanted more as far as what his daughter went through. Anyway, four out of five, I'd recommend you read it, especially if you're a fan of sci-fi horror and you want something that's not too deep in the sci-fi. I think it's a fun read. The next book I have is my most disappointing of the stack, and that is Below by Laurel Hightower. <sighs> what do I say? What do I say? For a short novella, I expected something like fun, gory, fast-paced, with creatures essentially, because we have a bat on the cover. It had to be some bat-like creatures in here. Technically, we got some of that, but I just found it disappointing. I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. So to quickly recap this book, we have Addie. <sighs> I couldn't stand the character Addie, but let me just get to the summary. When she's driving through this snowstorm in West Virginia, Addie basically experiences these electrical issues, which leads her down the path of needing to trust this random, charismatic, let's call him a truck driver. While this driver ends up helping her like navigate through the storm and the driver's name I believe is Mads, there's an accident that happens that results in her having to make a decision. Does she just keep moving forward or does she go and help rescue this character, this driver Mads? Basically, does she play the hero? All the while, there's a mysterious red-eyed creature in the midst. As I said, I anticipated a fun short creature feature with this book. What I liked, the short chapters made this very bearable to read, and that's why I was able to actually get through this quickly. And there were moments that I did genuinely appreciate that I actually thought were quite creepy, especially when she was talking to Mads through a device, I think it was a radio or something of that sort. As the story progressed, you learned some things, and I, I liked that particular scene and setup. That was about it. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely about it because as far as what I didn't like, this character had the need for internal dialogue just throughout the story. And their internal dialogue was anything but interesting. The most obnoxious character I may have read from to date. A lot of that dialogue, I believe, was with her ex-husband. 
and it just clearly this character was built to have all these internal struggles and it was just painful to read through them and at that point I knew that oh this is one of those books set up that this is like a weak character with this bad history of being dependent on other people especially her ex-husband and now she's got to get out of a situation on her own and build strength. As uninspiring as that was for me, it could have been done a lot better in my opinion than the way it was done in this book. It was very difficult to get into this story and again, as I said, like the character whatsoever. The ending was ambiguous from what I remember. I do typically like those endings that get me thinking. This one, I didn't give a shit. <laughs> Excuse my language. I really didn't. I guess it was like, was there ever a creature? What, who cares? Two out of five. I'm not gonna miss it. If the next book that I'm reading, I, I believe is Crossroads, if I end up giving that a two out of five stars, this will probably be an author I resist reading from again, or at least take a long hiatus from. So back on a high note, the last book I gave a, another four out of five stars. It gave me exactly what I wanted from this type of book this was indeed another creature feature like for sure a creature feature there was a sci-fi element to this it was underwater which is one of my favorite environments when you go into the depths you got people in caverns you no know, tight spaces uh, you got questions about what they're saying i love that stuff so let me go ahead and introduce the actual book the Cavern by Alistair Hodge. The cover makes it pretty obvious as to what's happening here. <laughs> we've got this very dark creature here and we've got a human here moving away from it. The creature itself throughout the story reminded me of Alien. If you remember that movie, I did get those vibes from this book. To quickly recap the summary. In the Australian outback town of Pintaba, a sinkhole unveils an untouched cave system. Another premise that isn't necessarily new, but is usually one that gets me personally intrigued. So we have a character named Sam. He's a paramedic and he reluctantly joins this like expedition. He himself is a rock climber and while he's used to adventure and just challenges in general, diving and underwater exploration is not an area he's really comfortable with. So you've got that aspect to this book as well, where that helps to add a little tension and discomfort. So we have a group that ends up deciding to explore this untouched cave. You know, they want to be the first people to name it, see what's down there. They go down, they even find, they get a hint to new life forms, like pretty early on. And Sam eventually has to basically face his paranoia, you know, with claustrophobia and dealing with those tight spaces and going underwater because basically what happens, uh, one of the cavers, one of the people on the team gets injured and he's basically going in their place. So you got the dread buildup. Now, if I remember correctly, the creature is basically put in your face early on and that creature is relentless. I like the attributes for the creature. I like the descriptions and the fact that it's just a very simple in-your-face predator. This would be one of those movies where the predator wouldn't be hidden in the shadows for like 90% of the film and then you finally get to see it for the last 10 minutes. But this this creature is like in your face <laughs> off, off the bat from what I remember. As the group is exploring the caves, you know things happen and they have to fight their way they have to figure out a way to survive the circumstances there's much more to it for such a skinny book i just again i had a good time it gave me exactly what i expected which as i said was a fun creature feature in book form like i said earlier where the creature reminded me of alien aspects of this book reminded me of the descent and i quite like the combination was it perfect of course not still a fun ride as you'll hear me say time and time again with some of these books that give me exactly what i'm looking for to just go through the things that i like this reminded me of a b movie and i love me my b horror movies from back in the day it has plenty of action it has gore and it has decent characters i can't ask for much more than that as far as what i disliked about this book there are moments where you read from a different perspective it is not the perspective I expected to read from. 
I am trying hard not to spoil, so I won't say much more than that. For me, it took away some of the scare factor or the creepy. I'm, I wasn't actually scared of this book, to be fair. I, very rarely that books will creep me out. Having said that, it felt like it just removed me a bit from the experience. There was also the use, I don't know if this is Australian slang. I actually lived in Australia for three years, mind you, not in the outback. I lived in Sydney for three years. I did go through Australia, at least some parts of it, like Melbourne and what's it called, Byron Bay. Uh, and I remember in my time there, there was a lot of very interesting slang. I don't remember if this line was again Australian, but a couple of times they would say blow a raspberry. And I, I don't know, I just found it funnier than I think it was intended. It was very minor, it was in here, and, and in all fairness, I did get a good laugh from its use. The last thing I'll say is that the involvement with the police and the government felt unnecessary. <laughs> Again, it felt like something that you just add to add conflict. Mm, I could have done without it. I, I wasn't too crazy about that aspect. Again, I have to be intentionally vague about what I mean because I think if I go into more detail, I'll be spoiling it. So I'm going to look up this author because this was the first book I read from Alistair Hodge and I want to pick up more. That was it for this wrap up. Thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to, feel free to leave any comment that you want. Otherwise, until my next video, thank you for joining. Feel free to do the like, share, subscribe thing per usual. That's all. Take care. Bye.